Both little doors on the outside of the motorhome. This one is your propane. It has a gauge. Unless you use the heater a lot, you shouldn't need to worry about it. It'll be full when you leave. If you run out, you'll need to fill it up. Otherwise, we'll fill it up when you get back. The next one is just a storage bin. It's got a little uh, extension cord and a small electric heater. These two are your vents for your refrigerator and your water heater. You shouldn't need to worry about them at all. <clears throat> this is another storage bin that has some uh, leveling blocks if you need them. A couple of jacks you can stabilize the rear end if you wish. And it's got a low point drain. You won't want to mess with those at all. That's for winterizing it. It's the large compartment in the back has some amenity for you. There's a little barbecue, a little garbage can, a bunch of chairs, a mat if you want to lay it out to help keep the dirt out of the motorhome. Just use them as you wish. Coming around to the other side. We have another storage bin and it has a white hose that is only for fresh water. Do not use it to dump the sewer. And then it has a adapter, an electrical adapter to go from a 50 amp plug to the 30 amp plug that is on the motorhome power cord. This is an outdoor shower. I really doubt you'll need to use it, but if you ever do, you have to be hooked up to water or have the pump inside on. It's just got a little shower head. You just turn it on and off. It's got hot and cold. This is where you put your gas in for the motorhome. This is the sewer clean out that you won't need to worry about unless it fills up. We'll dump it when you come back. If you do need to dump it, um, you have to get the hose out of the bumper right here. This hose will hook on where this cap is. You twist this on when you pull up to the station dump. You put this in the sewer in the ground. You want to pull the big valve first. And that will open up the main drain. And then there's a gray water and a black water. The black water is your toilet. So you'll want to drain it first. Um, there is a hose, or excuse me, an adapter in this little bucket that you will hook into the ground. So this will hook onto here. And this will go in the ground where the sewer hole is and you'll be able to see the water coming out and when the all of the water is done draining the black water then you just you just pull this to drain it and push it back in and it will stop and then you'll do your gray water which is your bath water and both of your sinks your kitchen and bathroom sink you'll pull this out and it'll help clean all the black water out of the sewer hose and you'll see it come out there um, in a more of a cloudy color rather than a brown color like the uh, sewage has. <clears throat> These are your water connections for the city. This one is to flush the black water tank. You don't necessarily need to do it if you need to uh, dump the black water. Don't worry about flushing it out. We'll do it next time we do it. This is your city water hookup where you would hook up that white hose with the blue line on it. The door above it, this is important. This is your water control panel. So depending on what type of water you're trying to use, if you're hooked up in an RV park or say you're at a family member's home and you're hooked up to pressurized city water, then you would want to turn these valves to two and six. 
here's the different numbers if you are hooked up to a city water source and you want to fill the holding tank in the motorhome you would turn it to one and six and it will automatically fill the holding tank in the motorhome the country fill you will not need to use if you're dry camping and you're not hooked up to, uh, to pressured water to use the pump inside you're going to want to go to the normal setting which is where we're at now three and five they call that dry camping where you don't have any hookups so the first three, first two and the fourth one are the only ones that you'll really need to know about when you're using the motorhome. This door has your power cord. This is the 30 amp cord that comes with the motorhome that plugs into the other end of that little adapter I showed you. We have it plugged in right now just to keep the batteries charged for the next customer that comes. Moving forward, we have the, another storage tank that has um, really nothing that you need unless you're going to dump the sewer. If you are hooked up in an RV park, this is a little snake that you can use that is shorter on that end and taller on this end to put your hose on to keep it on a gradual slant down to the actual sewer but unless you're using it for an extended period of time you probably won't need that the next door has your coach battery in it this battery works everything inside the motorhome it is not connected to the engine of the, the van so if this battery happens to go dead your truck will still start and it will recharge this battery when it's running like it does the truck battery you shouldn't need to mess with that at all this is another low point drain you won't want to mess with for the fresh water and then this door has your generator in it and we'll go inside in a minute and we'll show you how to uh, use the generator Coming inside the coach, you have a switch that is a main power switch. If that red light is not on, you will not have any power inside the coach, so your lights or anything, any, everything won't work. So if it's off, you just need to push the button and hold it, and it will come on, and then you'll have power inside. There is your interior and exterior light switches here. This power step switch, when you're parked, every time you open and close the door into the motorhome, this the step's gonna come in and out if it's on. So once you get where you're going and you don't want that to, every time you open the door to keep the step out, just turn that to off and the step will stay out. If you happen to forget to put it up and you start the truck, it will automatically retract on its own when you get ready to move. Above that is your main control for all of your functions inside. There's two switches that have black tape on them. Do not use those switches or it will uh, drain your battery very quickly. So those are things that you won't need to use. There's two slide buttons. There's a sofa slide and a bedroom slide. Um, you just push them and they'll extend. When you hear it drag down, stop pushing the button. You have to hold the button to do it. Uh, this is your hour meter for your generator. To start your generator, you first push down stop. The little red light comes on. You need to count to five. That will prime it. And then push it and hold it on the start until it starts and then you can let go of it. It'll take approximately 10 to 15 seconds to actually produce power into the motorhome because it's running tests to see how much power it needs to have when it kicks on, like if your air conditioner's on or whatever. When you're done with the generator, you just have to push stop quickly and it will shut off by itself. If you're using 
the water in the trailer and you're not hooked up to city water, you need to turn this water pump to on and it will pressure up and every time you turn a faucet on, it will kick on and uh, the water will come out of your faucet. If you're not using it when you're traveling and stuff, I highly recommend that you shut it off. The next two switches are for your water heater. It'll either run off of the liquid propane gas or it will run off of electricity. So if you're plugged in at a motor in a RV park or at someone's home, you want to put it on electric. If you're out dry camping somewhere or they don't have hookups where you're at, just push the LP gas one and it will uh, your water heater will heat up with gas. These four buttons are a uh, level indicators. The first one is your battery. It tells you your battery is fully charged. The next one is how much fresh water you have left. The next one is your black water. The tank is currently empty. The next one is your gray water and it is currently empty as well. When it will be empty when you take it. That covers the control panel. Above the door, there's a little cabinet. Inside the cabinet there are some DVDs you're welcome to watch. There's also an electrical plug, uh, extension cord that's white. Um, if you want to watch the TV, you just have to plug it in right down here, and that will give you power to your TV and your DVD. And to watch the TV, there's a button right underneath here. You push that button, and the TV comes out automatically to whatever angle you wish it to be. For the TVs to work, you have to either have the generator running or be plugged into power. They do not work just on the 12 volt system. Up here you have a loft bed that will sleep probably two people. Um, there's a little stool to help people get up and down. Obviously a broom dustpan. Moving on, this is the large slide this slide includes the love seat and the kitchen table. There are seat belts in these two positions and there's also seat belts, two seat belts for two people on each side of the table. To make this also turn into a bed, you just grab a hold of the front, lift it up, and it will lay down. You can put the seat belts down so you don't have to lay on them for a bed. To put it back up, you just pull up on it and push it forward. down and then it becomes just a couch again um, you have a TV antenna here that you can get uh, open-air TV you just push it up and spin it a little bit and it'll help with the reception um, it's a fixed unit so it doesn't like raise up and down so you don't have to worry about moving it when you get ready to leave Next we have the stove. For the stove to work, you basically choose the burner that you want. So we're going to light this front one. You just turn it to light and twist the spark and it will light and then turn it to whatever desired temperature. When you're done cooking, you just shut it off and it'll shut it off. We have a hood fan, light. Fan works off at 12 volts so you don't have to be plugged in for the fan to work. Next we have the microwave. Um, if you want to use it as an actual microwave, you hit the power level. You just can leave it at 10, put the desired time that you want in it, and then push start and it will go. Maybe. 